Hi there, Maria here. I'm going to make a ledger style journal today that is super simple to make. I use, this is a sample of one I have made already. And uh, I'm gonna make one that is eight by four inches. And um, the inserts, I had already cut them out and there are 10 inserts and the paper is stock, card stock. So it's pretty stable and sturdy paper. The covers are gonna be um, um, 140 pound Strathmore watercolor paper. So as you could see there earlier, I had made holes uh, with, an, uh, with an awl in the other journal. It was very hard because there were so many uh, papers to punch through. So uh, this one I decided to make use a hole punch, even though the holes can't be any farther in than half an inch, which is not a lot, but uh, should be enough. Um, and here I'm just um, measuring and cutting, and that is so uh, it's usually not 100% perfect. So I try to get them as as uniform as possible, but this is kind of a, a rustic, shabby chic type journal where perfection is not the, the, the goal here. Anything handmade is, is rarely perfect. Not my stuff anyways. So I'm uh, just measuring and using my paper cutter. It would be very hard to use scissors and get a straight line. So I found, I guess, some uh, uneven stuff. So I, I trimmed something. And here I'm measuring one half inch in for the hole punch and a three quarter inch in from the side. So there are m many different kinds of hole punches that you can get. This was just a regular hole punch from Staples, but I know there are many decorative punches that you could use. If you have, use what you have. Here I'm just uh, marking where the holes were on the first one that I measured with my pencil on all the other ones to make sure I get the, the hole in the same place. So here I've done them all and uh, I'm ready to start uh, decorating my covers. So I was gonna use uh, some pink paint to start with just to discover that the paint, paint, uh, pink paint <laughs> was no longer available in the tube. So I went to some burnt sienna, which is uh, like an earthy, kind of old looking, uh, yellowed type paint, which I like uh, if you want to have a little older vintage look to um, your art or paper, uh, papers to use burnt sienna, it's a good one. And it doesn't have to be the same uh, value on each, uh, each cover can be different. So I'm using uh, F ephemera of all kinds. I have some music scores that are really old and some uh, things I printed out, a bunch of ravens from a sheet that I got on Etsy. Here I got a whole bag full of old uh, stamps from all over the world. So I said, well, why not put this? This is actually the perfect travel size journal. So you could do it, say you wanted to take it traveling, do a traveling motif to the destination where you're going, um, or any other um, event that you would like to record. There was glue stuff in there, pictures, uh, ticket stubs, um, uh, like air, airplane tickets. You could use airplane tickets as, um, as an inside uh, page. You can always, uh, when this is all uh, 
tied up, it can be taken apart and you can add in more pages. It's a very flexible way of doing journaling, which I like because you never know how many pages you might need. It's good for doodling and for uh, just uh, using some simple uh, tools. Like you might have, if you travel, you might have a limited set of tools, but to use what you have and watercolors are always good, of course. Here I have no plans. I just randomly stick all these things down on the page. And I'm using Mod Podge, which I really like as an adhesive because uh, it uh, sticks well all the edges and it can work with pretty heavy paper. So here I've done like a shabby edges with darker paints. So I decided to do the same thing with the this uh, journal more or less. So I added on some more burnt sienna. And here I decided to put some green on it too, just to break it up a little. Now I never decided which is the front and the back, so it's kind of very random. Here I'm using some raw umber to darken everything. Found it to be maybe a little much, so I can always take some paper towel and dip it in water and and remove any paint that I don't like. And I always pretty much use baby wipes, which are wet already. And you can uh, work with those. Here I had actually put some black on the edges just to age it some more. And that was way too much, so I am toning that down. Don't be afraid to just slap the paint on. You can always remove it, uh, what's too much, if uh, while it's wet, especially on, on watercolor paper. It's very sturdy. The black also gives a frame to, to the cover, which is kind of nice. I kind of look at the, the, the whole picture as far as colors go and see what is pleasing to the eye. Here I had actually some Tim Holtz uh, reinforcers for holes. And uh, don't go out buy them. If you don't have them, you don't really need them. But it's kind of a nice touch to circle the holes with a little bit of design. And it does so uh, reinforce the holes. I'm gluing them down. They already are sticky, but I want to make sure they stay on. So using some tacky glue. Things like washi tape and uh, doodads like that, they they need to be glued down even though they have glue already to stay where you want them to stay. So here I'm trying to decide what to do next. I'm a little bit um, confused. I had planned on putting that painted fern, but it doesn't fit and it doesn't look right. So. When unsure, then uh, do something else. Here I'm trying to just straighten out the, the paper while it's still a little damp. 
because uh, wa uh, watercolor paper tend to buckle pretty bad. So it's good to flatten them out while you can. So I decided on a stencil here. I'm using a piece of uh, kitchen sponge that I cut up and I find that that's really good for um, stenciling, when, especially if you do small areas. So I had more ravens, so I thought I'd try another raven picture. But I wasn't happy with it, so. Now I don't know what to do, so I decided I'm just going to paint the backs. I had some leftover green paint. And I just rub it on there with a baby wipe. And you can do a little pattern in the paint just to make it more interesting. So there it was dry. So now I decided to stamp some. Uh, uh, words like art journal on the front here and I'm using stairs on uh, permanent ink and I love it it's it never doesn't fade and it does not rub off I have all different colors I did black here So I decided to use a stamp just to uh, liven it up a bit and uh, half a stamp on there. So to me now that's finished. The front is finished and the back is finished. It's not a big deal with the back. So now uh, I have come to the point to tie them together, all the pages. So I'm using a brown and a, um, a green, kind of variegated green yarn to a very soft yarn. And I'm threading all three layers of yarn into my darning needle, with, which has a big eye. I go for the front. From the front and then I come from the back and go down the same hole so you'll have a corner that is um, fastened you, you just make a knot to keep them together and, and see what you want to do with the ends later and then you just um, cut up 30 more pieces of yarn and do the same thing with the uh, with the other hole and fortunately they all lined up. I found it was much easier to work with those uh, punched holes than the ones I, I did with the, with, the, with an awl. So again go for the front and come back around the corner with the same into the same hole and then tie a knot. And here you could do either like a regular knot like this and tie it up if you wanted. But I thought, well, let's see. I'm just gonna see. It's gonna the ledger will open up and kind of fold there, like all the pages. So I decided to just do like a, a knot, knot them all together, and then to make a tassel. So. There's so many ways you could tie that up. I, I'm just using some yarns that I have. And there we are. It's all ready. And there's the other one with it. So there you go. 